she just want us to get canceled. We halfway through the year, <laughs> and we didn't even like completely get through. She just want us to get canceled. You can still get canceled. I think you can. Yeah, I think so. I nah, you got to do some wild shit to get canceled. <laughs> Let's think about it. 2024, we're going to recap yeah. the half a year so far. There's a lot of people. Diddy stuff. Diddy got canceled. Because he was being a freak bull. D- Diddy got, you can get canceled is all I'm saying. It just depends on what you're doing, right? It depends. It depends. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can get canceled for the things that you say anymore. But if it's seen, yeah. and if yeah. it's on live TV, I don't know if live you... TV, but if it's. Yeah. yeah. It depends. Because there's a lot of. Uh, just groups online. Diddy may be the first and only person in 2024 to get canceled. Yeah. This year. Just this year alone. So you're saying people get canceled now with proof? Because I do think the real reason why they canceled him for real, for real, is because they saw that video. That's true. Mm-hmm. Right? That's true. Right? That's I feel true. like they A little bit before did. then, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, when the lawsuit dropped, yeah. it was already, there was a lot of damage done. But that video was, the the CNN video was the one that, like, really put the nail in the coffin. Really put the nail in the coffin. Hmm. It's uh, been a year. Yeah, it's it has already. been a fucking year. There's been a yeah. lot going on uh, in 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, Need to know podcast listeners, thank y'all for joining us. This is another episode of the Need to Know podcast. Uh, we are just gonna tap in and do a half of the year check in. Yeah, just see how everybody's feeling. Recover some of the events that have happened thus far within the year. Um, I think it's also important to kind of check in and tap in with your friends, Alex, Reggie, myself. Uh, we see each other every single week. And we hang out even on the weekends, but I don't think we ever really fucking tap in with each other. Like, right. how are you feeling? What are you going through? Like, so feel, life you doing? we do, but we don't. Like, we really do, especially on Patreon, patreon.com slash you know. Like, we do hey. genuinely ask each other, like, about life and, like, how we're feeling. So we do talk about it, but I don't know if we do it for real, because still, what it is is the cameras are on. Yeah. You yeah. know? So it doesn't feel like, it does feel genuine, but, like, Real, real life. Yeah. I don't know. No, I agree. There's a caveat. There's a nuance to it. Yeah. Pierre's also here. Shout out to Pierre. Yo. Pierre is three weeks strong with a hat on. That's him. I so told him. And he got a bag for no, it. No, it's not I even am. like it's not even like a you didn't go dad hat with it either. You mm. went like snapback. Yeah. Straight backwards. <laughs> Alex, I like that. Like, Alex gave me the blueprint. He said, yo, oh he said, yo, wolf it out for like a couple weeks. Matter of fact, That's I was it. reading the comments last week and people were mad that I didn't actually show my line. Should I show it? That was a I few mean, weeks ago, but sure. I mean, a few weeks ago, my fault. Should I yeah. show it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to. I you think so. I think you gave him blue balls when you said, hey, my hairline's fucked up. Like, everybody wants <laughs> to see it, a fucked up it, hairline. Do All right. So, Savon, since you did it, I'm going to do it. All right, let's go. <laughs> No, it's, the cameras it's not that bad. <laughs> nah, yeah, he it's, it's really not that bad. I would have never noticed. I would have never noticed. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, and <laughs> as, a, as a man who went through the balding stage, mm-hmm. I understand insecurities. And I love you. You're my brother. Oh, you too, kid. But maybe, you know, there's just a little bit of insecurity at that. Nah, you know, bro. In that point. <laughs> you're, supposed it's to support, okay. you're supposed to support your brother. Right I now. need him to acknowledge it before I can support See, him. And it's okay. Uh, the thing with Savon is he's trying to recruit Alex. Remember, he's trying to recruit us to his side. Like, yo, nobody trying to go over there, bro. Like, <laughs> like nobody <laughs> trying. You're stupid, bro. Like, well, halfway through yo. the year, you still have your hairline. So shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, so we will you, check bro. back in another yeah. six months. But that being said, it's yeah, the yeah. Needs to Know Podcast. I go by the name Savon. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, A, as always, the Paco Rabone Poppy. Never alone. I'm always with the posse. Hi, guys. It's Reggie. We're here another week, but this is a special edition episode. We hope you guys love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last week, we gave y'all a draft. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to hear how y'all feel about that draft, <laughs> to feel about our teams. Uh, and this week, we just want to do a check-in. We just want to kind of see how everybody's feeling, yeah. recap some of the events that have happened thus far in the year. Uh, we are gearing up for our mixer, August 17th. Make sure y'all pop out and show niggas. All hey. right? <laughs> Make sure y'all pop out. But yeah, um, yeah. August 17th, the mixer, the information is in the bio, is in the descriptions of all Need to Know podcast related mm-hmm. content. Um, and have a good time with us, all right? It's yeah. an open bar. It's going to be some vibes. It's going to be some tunes. Edin's going to be in the building. Um, I know a lot of y'all love Edin. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Edin. Shout out to Edin. Family. Yeah, he is family yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. And we have some some really dope surprises lined up for y'all. So please make sure y'all tap in. Mm-hmm. The tickets are selling out extremely fast. Fast, mm-hmm. fast, fast. Extremely fast. It's moving. So please uh, tap in and let us know. We want to we wanna rock with y'all. I know a lot of people come out from Atlanta. Last year we had Atlanta. Last year we had LA. DC. Last year we had Toronto. We yeah, had DC. Yeah. We had everybody in the building. So please make sure y'all show y'all beautiful faces yeah. in the flesh, in the building. Um, because this is the one time we get to 
connect with y'all each and every year. And it's on a rooftop, and it's in New York City, and like <laughs> we look good. Come on, hello. Fuck. And it's gonna be Zai outside. It's gonna be licks yeah. and Zai. So. There's an outdoor section. It's saying. a little indoor outdoor situation. I'm it's just perfect. Saying. It's perfect. Imagine just toting your spliff, walking right inside to go get a drink. I mm. mean, come on. With the I've breeze blowing, oh. a bunch of baddies passing you by. Come like, come on. It don't get any better than that. That's why we got the green behind you today, Alex. You know what I mean? Hey, we got cool. the chronic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You staying on brand. I like that. Baby. You being sharp. Uh, today, we're also going to get into <laughs> projects that we love so far at this halfway point. Savon, I know you think you don't have many projects that you like. Just come with us with some music that you've been attached to. Because sure. right now, at the time of this recording, we're recording this at sort of like the midway point yep. of the year, which is funny because, you know, at the end of the year, we usually do a recap on the best music, the best moments, and stuff like that. And this is the mini one. So, um, yeah, maybe we should start there. So do y'all want to start with projects mm -hmm. or do y'all want to like, how are we doing this? Because there are certain okay. songs that have really stuck out to me that may not be on a project, right. but there's also certain albums that I'm like, oh shit, everything. this has been in my rotation. Everything. I want to hear everything. We're at, the music half, we're at the halfway point. I think okay. it's been, I just remember feeling throughout this whole year, I personally feel like this has been a great year for music. Like a lot of my favorite music has dropped. Great should point, I start Rachel. or should I just Please, like, okay. no. Please. So I have a lot of projects that I'm genuinely listening to that dropped this year. And I feel like it, this hasn't happened in a while because I'll look at my Spotify like end of the year summary and it's always like older music that has dropped in like 2014 and shit like that. But um, so a few projects that I genuinely listen to a lot is Bryson Tiller and the album I, I didn't know that the album name is actually Bryson Tiller self-titled yeah. yeah another self-titled album that I'm spinning a lot is Tyla Tyla Facts. she went in and swept oh so you into the conceited albums uh yes no I'm not mad at the little <laughs> yeah, you know self-titled album if I was a music artist I would also have an album named Regina <laughs> um My Delete Later by J. Cole yeah Part Next Door P5 Ooh. these are just such great projects like oh, 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 Schoolboy oh. Q Blue Lips and a personal favorite, it dropped in like, I think the end of 2023, but this is my most played album. Big, big, big surprise, big surprise. It's called The Night Shift by Larry Drune and his <laughs> right-hand man, Cardo. I That's probably the project that I listen to the most. But I don't know people will get sick of me talking about Larry Drune, so I'm going to just leave it at that. Not the Cardo. <laughs> Not as wings. I like that. Yeah. Um, our list kind of cross-contaminated a little bit. <laughs> I have Bryson Tiller for sure on mine. I've yeah. been listening. I, I've been spending a lot of Bryson Tiller. Um... The deluxe of Chris Brown's 1111. Now, good one. I know the original 1111 came out last year. It came out uh, the tail end of last year. But the deluxe dropped. Um, it had a, a, a lot of songs on there, new songs. If y'all don't know, Chris Brown gives you a different album with his deluxe. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't just yeah. add one or two songs. He gives you another like 13. New so it feels like a whole new album. Uh, definitely tapped into that. But I think for me, my favorite body of work this year yeah. um, is still We Don't Trust You. Future and Metro Boomin. I love it. Um, that's been the album of the year thus far for me. Again, halfway through. But I think um, not just the singles, and I know we're going to talk about the moments and, and the things like like that, what that, the the domino effect that like that had. Yeah. But I just think the production on that album, um, everything, the packaging of the album, all the songs, the artists, I really appreciate what artists are doing now today when they drop their album. Mm -hmm. There's no features on it, so it forces you to listen to it. Mm -hmm. This is actually how you get somebody who listens to albums on shuffle to just listen through. Oh, like your psychotic guy. Because there is an <laughs> element of surprise. I think the reason I listen to albums on yeah. shuffle is because I like the element of surprise <laughs> when I first hear it. I don't want to know who's coming up next. I don't want to know what's happening You're next. You're kind of on to something. So with yeah. this album, when uh, Future and Metro Boomin dropped it, it was just the songs. I didn't know the features on it. I listened to it straight through and it felt like an album was on shuffle. So uh, for me, I think that's probably my favorite um, album. And yeah, th those were like the highlights to me. And then that's obviously like some some singles that I listened to. Yeah. Uh, I do want to also shout out Usher and yeah. Justin Timberlake. Those are two people from the previous eras who still put out bodies of work. Um, Usher, he did the Super Bowl this year. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Did you like but Usher's yeah. album though? Um, No. But, I did not like it. I, but I like some of the singles. I yeah. did not like it. What's that shit called? Uh, coming home or some shit? Coming home. Homecoming? Yeah. Uh, we like that good, nigga good. never went home. We love, I, I think us as a pop, we love good, good. Sure. Um, and then I don't know what. Wait, Glue was not on there, right? 
I, is it glue or GLU? It, glue. It's glue, right? Okay. Yeah, 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 like, glue. I don't think that was on the album, but I love that song. But that was a single by Usher. Yeah. Um, and Ruin. Ruin for me was a highlight song oh, that yeah, I listened Ruin, to. Yeah, right. yeah. Ruin was a highlight song for me. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of projects. Alex, I know you're about to really get in your bag. So before you really, really, really <laughs> get in your bag, yeah. let me let me just highlight a few more. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to just shut the fuck up in a little bit. <laughs> before you um, actually start talking about music. And oh. Thames. <laughs> and, and, and Thames. Wow. And Thames. Thames is He's definitely... He's like, I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah, he did. He sounded like a proud parent. <laughs> no, wow. That was one of my favorites as well. But yeah, so Thames. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's what I've been listening to halfway through the year. Wow, I like that. Uh, I think we all comprise a little bit of the same faves this year. Um, Savon, you're just coming off of the Metro Boomin and Future Project. I want to add to that. I'm very split between uh, we don't trust you and we, don't tr we still don't trust you. Mm. we still don't trust you oh man see i got um future hendrix hendrix is my favorite project from future y'all i'm not new to future by the way i love his mixtapes i love beast mode i love all of that shit the artistic ability that future showcases when he gets into his r&b bag is incredible to me though i don't think the album is better than hendrix i really do enjoy it you know it sounds like he doing isley brother joints on that motherfucker like it sounds really good. You know, anytime an artist is talking to women, I'm listening. Uh, yeah. You also mentioned Thames. Thames, at the Thames album, I can't turn off. Uh, the J. Cole feature is amazing. Mm -hmm. My personal favorite song on that project is Ready. Oh, man, that should make me want to get ready, nigga. <laughs> oh. <laughs> J. Cole was featured on the Thames project, and we still don't trust you. So shout out to J. Cole. Great point. And he was featured on Grippy. Grippy. <laughs> <laughs> that also happened this year. I just beat for, oh my God, this year was so crazy. So many great moments. Also, yeah. another Afrobeats artist. I mentioned a little bit on another episode, Iris Starr. Um, mm -hmm. Please go check out her album if you haven't. She didn't. It didn't really sell well, so I, I, I know that's probably why a lot of folks aren't speaking about it or talking about it. Iris Starr is a very diverse Afrobeats uh, mm -hmm. artist. This young lady is great. I believe yeah. she was on tour with Chris Brown. Don't yeah. quote me. I think she has but some I feel, Are I, you yeah, sure? Because Tyler was also on tour with Chris Brown. Tyler but were was, they both? No, Tyler was. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, she dropped out or she's not a part of it anymore. Mm -hmm. I did but I believe that. Iris yeah. Starr yes. is somebody. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she, great. she's on that tour as well. She's she was, super yeah. great. And I'm not just saying that because I have Nigerian bias. <laughs> no, she's, I mean, that she could be a big reason. Yeah, that could be. I ain't going to lie. Reggie, like I said, we're meeting at the intersection. Blue Lips, Schoolboy Q. Mm -hmm. that schoolboy Q really shocked me first because I didn't think he was actually going to drop music this year mm -hmm. so the fact that he did and it sounded like he really took his time with it um, personally like songs is uh, like give me two seconds mm -hmm. thank God for me mm -hmm. I just I get outer body experiences I know that was when my that immediate song. favorite <laughs> yeah, and I thought I was special but then I saw everybody start posting it I was like oh damn we yeah. all love this shit <laughs> <laughs> like damn I thought it was just me Yeah, I want to keep it in LA for a second this project hasn't got enough of the uh, credit that it should have gotten Vince Staples Dark Times oh uh, and there's, there's been some people in the Need to Know community on Twitter. Shout out to y'all, man. You guys are very oh, active. Oh, yeah, they were asking it. you to review, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I've been meaning to get this for a while. Them, they really love music. And then if you haven't already, please go follow the Need to Know community on Twitter. They talking everything on there. They talking how to get their girl back. Okay? They, they, <laughs> we, we watching things as a family together. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And most importantly, too, they're, they're talking about music in there. Uh, Vince Staples also kind of kicked off this year with a new show on Netflix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was very surprised. And mind you, I love it. It's 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 very Vince Staples esque for sure. It just <laughs> made so much sense. It made a ton of yeah. sense. It's his style of comedy too, like absolutely like that dry style. humor. Yeah. Like I'm that's that's my bag. I ain't gonna lie. All that uh, what was what was the show? Our Future Wolf Gang, Loiter Squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Loiter Squad. I love all of that shit, mm -hmm. mind you. Vince Staples show was a bit more produced. Anyway, I only mentioned it because I didn't know where he found the time to put out this album called Dark Times. And still put out that uh, show that also just recently got renewed. Oh. Uh, Vince Staples on Dark Times is basically telling y'all, yo, I've been trying to tell y'all this is the problem with the music industry for a while. Or this is the problem with what we do as a culture for a while. But I'm going to do it in a very palatable way and calm way. Mm -hmm. See, his approach, his tone, it makes you feel like, all right, he's just vibing. But when you really listen to what he's saying on this album... It, it just yeah. really mimics everything he's been saying about his complaints with what he has wrong with the industry mm -hmm. and just entertainment. So uh, for me, that's been a personal favorite. Uh, a Boogie's album, man. I know. Oh, if you... wow. I forgot about that. You're that's in heavy rotation. It's, a, it's not like 
it's, it's a great album. Yes. Like, it's a lot of collections of songs that really, really sound good. Yes, absolutely. It's no. not just, like, one song. No. Like and we're, not, we're not speaking from our New York nah, bias, right? No, not at all. I think it's a good song. <laughs> it could be. It, it could, could be. be. Because <laughs> he is a New York artist. Yeah. I think yeah. people should let us know. Like, leave right. in the comments if, like, you're a non-New Yorker, but, like, does A Boogie hit for you like that? Yes. You know, I'm very curious. You want to know what's funny? I actually yeah. have some friends who live in L.A., and they are familiar with A Boogie, but it's one of those things where they don't get it. It's like gotcha. when I hear certain sounds from different regions, and I just, I, I just don't get it. I just can't. That makes sense. And it's okay. Yeah. A Boogie, they respect him, but they're like, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. In LA, at least. My friends it. in LA, I've heard <laughs> that so many different times. Right. They know him. I think out of all the current New York artists, outside of maybe a Cardi B, and a Nicki Minaj because I don't think they necessarily have a New York sound. Mm -hmm. um, the male artist, mm -hmm. I think A Boogie is the one that has crossed over, but it's still he's, such a New York kind of niche sounds out of arenas, sound. But you're right. People are like, eh, I get it, but yeah. nah, it's, it's not one of those things for me. So I do think it's some yeah. bias with A Boogie with us. You know what? To, to your point about LA, people in LA maybe not understanding it. Mm -hmm. When you think about like LA music, it's very much still centered around like traditional rap if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, I know it was originated, started in New York, et cetera. But when, even their new stuff, like left, right, left, right, they're not necessarily using auto-tune to mimic their voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably what they're not understanding. A Boogie has figured out a way to mm -hmm. finesse auto-tune with the sing-rap combination. Mm -hmm. And not singing like a Tory Lanez, but like, it's still sounding like rap. Yeah. So I can kind of see where they're coming from to an extent. Regardless, I love his project. I love his album. I love the feature with Cash Cobain. Um, I'm going to round up here in a second. It's really been a good year for music. This is important to me because, again, we were complaining about hip-hop being dead mm -hmm. last year. Hip-hop not being the number one genre, right? We were fighting like, damn, who is going to go number one, right? Can we, we get to it? Go, get, go ahead. We get it. Because I know we're talking about projects. Ahead, I know we're talking about bodies of work. But we can't talk about this year without talking about Drake and Kendrick. Yeah. We can't. can't. And the reason I didn't mention them is because they've been dropping like little disses and Lucy's and shit like that. Like yeah, this yeah. songs. Yeah. They haven't dropped a body of work at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to mention Drake or Kendrick just yet. Yeah. We but probably, yeah. we can get there. What's up, if you want to go. What's up, in chronological order. And I'm only keeping it in 2024 because if we go back to 2023, that's when For All the Dogs dropped. That's when a lot of people speculate uh, First Person Shooter was the first domino to fall within this rap beef. Now, thank you. I want to give a salute and a congratulations to us as hip hop fans, but I want to thank the hip hop gods <laughs> for allowing these clash of the Titans <laughs> thank to God, finally man. meet God like that. between Drake <laughs> and between Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> yeah. me, finally doing what it is that we all Titans felt. Clash. We knew it's the Avengers yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking civil war. It happened this year in 2024. You know what I'm still mm -hmm. stuck on Reggie Savon? That people really thought that Kendrick Lamar wasn't going to respond to Drake. Whoa, you, you, this you remember is, that? But this is like so, like, it's so funny you say that on, like, this pod. Talking yeah. about, I remember when the first whatever happened, we had, I remember it so clearly, we had Eden on that episode, Ooh. and he was like, Kendrick's not going to respond. I and now believe, look at where we are now. Reggie, like, I couldn't believe uh, Eden when he said that shit. I don't know, but some people, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, like, super wild at the time. I thought Kendrick was going to respond, but, like, it wasn't, like, Oh my God! How can you say that? Like it was still like, oh, we don't know what's gonna happen, and yeah. then now look at what happened. Do we think hip hop would be as big as it is right now at the time of this recording if we didn't have that that beef between the two of them? No, that no, that I feel like that is what yeah. everybody unanimously is crediting for. Like, wow, thank you for saving hip hop. And executives made a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot yeah. of people made a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot, a lot of, money. of money. I don't want to just highlight yeah, yeah. the executives because yep. I feel like they do get a lot of flack. Yeah. But content creators. We've all oh, yeah, you know, you know, the reaction videos. We like, have no, yeah, but uh, shout out to like Drake and Kendrick. Thank you for doing that. But also Thank shout you. out to like us for like really appreciating the moment. Like we weren't just like, oh, this is cool. Like yeah. we doubled down. We made content. We discussed mm -hmm. it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Like yeah. shout out to us too for, for being sure. like really dedicated fans. Yeah. Absolutely, fans, yeah. content creators, peers. Sound like you was about to jump in and say something. No, I was just gonna say like a lot of times in life, uh, and like a lot. I sound mad old. <laughs> A lot of times, like, when stuff like that happens, like, you know, you got, like you were saying, the Clash of the Titans, everyone usually remembers, like, the moment or where they were when everything happened. Yeah. And then, like Reggie was saying, to appreciate the moment and really dive really 
you know, deep into it, it says a lot. And like, it just like, you know, reminds me looking back, looking back, like, or not back, looking forward, like 10 years from now, five years from now, we're all going to be like, wow. Like, I remember we were right here, you know, mm-hmm. realizing the covering moment it, it, like breaking it down. Exactly. I also think that as well, like I was, you know, I got a little sentimental on my story when I put like, I stitched all of our episodes, which did great. And in the caption, I was like, this is like a moment that our kids are going to ask us about. and be like, oh, my God, you remember that rap beef? And I was yeah. like, oh, sit down. <laughs> and I'm like, let me, let me tell that. you. Let me tell you. Like, yeah, we right. really people are going to be asking us about yeah. this. And rap beef. I just feel like our generation didn't necessarily have one that was the one. Mm-hmm. Right. Like era before us had the Nas versus Jay-Z. Era mm-hmm. before that had. Uh, KRS, MC San, etc. LL Cool Biggie J, Pac. Biggie Pac. You know, exactly. Like, it, the list literally goes on and on, bro. Um, we had a chance to kind of live through one of those benchmark kind of beefs. And yeah. I think it was dope to kind of see the updated version. Again, at the time of this recording, Rick Ross did get snuffed. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah. but, but there hasn't been too much violence. <laughs> and even Rick Ross getting snuffed, that was through a fan. Yeah. It wasn't personally connected to Drake. It mm-hmm. wasn't a reaction People from Drake. People try to make it seem like that. But, yeah, it's yeah. just one of those things where, obviously, Rick Ross is in Canada. Drake is a representative of Canada. He is Canadian. So mm-hmm. it makes sense. If you go to a territory and you are blatantly disrespectful, there may be consequences. The consequences for Rick Ross was, thankfully, thankfully, it was just getting punched in the face and your security guard got his ass quit. Like, I swear you got to learn from like your mistakes. When that plane almost crashed he was in and he made it, that's when he was supposed to just chill out. He, he God will give you signs. He kept going. He will give you signs. I feel like this is so important for passionate, for passion in yeah. hip-hop. No funny shit. Like, mm-hmm. for a while, we didn't know where the passion was at, right? We were depending on the three-headed goat, right? That's Kendrick, Drake, J. Cole to kind of steer. I'm, at the time before the beef. <laughs> Let's talk about J. Cole. Oh, man. Damn. We, we, we will get back to that uh, big beef. Right? Nah, you're gonna get back to that. Nah, we gonna get to it together. <laughs> we go side Bro, we gotta right tackle the beef. Come on. Problem I'm done. It's us. <laughs> Collectively. Sometimes it takes three people, three hands. Tackle the beef. <laughs> no? Nigga, this ain't Taco Bell. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck one with you, nigga. No, it goes. But J. Cole. <laughs> J. Cole. Let's talk about J. Cole. He let Nas down. He let Nas down. He let a lot of people down at Dreamville <laughs> Fest. I feel like that was such a long time Wait, ago, hold but. Hold on. I be feeling so bad for Reggie, because Reggie really don't give a fuck the way people give a fuck. <laughs> she don't. But we know that. Yeah. But the people that know her know this podcast. They know that, hey, they might think she's she the fuck. I just, yeah, yeah. I know, I'm, glad, I'm so glad you guys caught that, because yeah. I was just sitting here. <laughs> I didn't say anything, and Alex already ready yeah. i was like i feel so bad for reggie i'm like what, what am i yeah. doing but we we, we got to acknowledge it again halfway mm-hmm. point to 2024 right. that was a big moment when uh the beef kicked off again we kind of started out and we didn't even really cover the magnitude of that situation between drake and kendrick so i'm not even mad going backwards and, and yeah. inserting j cole's participation yeah mm-hmm. or lack thereof um but yeah j cole he dropped out immediately Exit stage left. There's a rumor going around that Schoolboy Q, Reggie, mm-hmm. give him a heads up. So I really looked into this yeah. because it made headlines. And like I was like, okay, what actually happened? So when you look at the story, the original story, someone from Hip Hop DX saw Schoolboy Q and J. Cole talking before. Mm. And then the headline was like, oh my God, Schoolboy Q convinced J. Cole not to... Like, mm. But that was never confirmed. So that's why I never ran with it. Gotcha. Like, no one actually said Schoolboy Q said this to J. Cole. It was very, like, rumor that kind of blew up situation, in my opinion. But, yeah, people said that Schoolboy Q convinced J. Cole to back out of the beef right before his set at Dreamville Fest. If you guys want to believe it, I mean, it makes a great story and it makes kind of sense. But mm. I don't know. It's never been confirmed. And to the Dream Hill, uh, the Dream Hill, the Dreamville Hive, mm-hmm. I mean, post battle, J. Cole has been looking better and better. For sure. And he's been right? spotted all around the city riding his little bike. Bi- <laughs> like, and he, and he, w- but genuinely though, like, there's been fans, um, like taking videos randomly and yeah. then like Dreamville pages will like retweet them and stuff of him just like, Chilling on the, on like a park bench, writing. I know he's writing rap so because he has his headphones in. He's yeah. writing on his notepad and he's like bobbing his head. And then there's that girl who like randomly found him on the beach, like recording a song. <laughs> if I was, if so I, I don't know. I like that shit. I don't know if, how that looks to people, but I don't know. I like that he's just spending some time alone. <laughs> if I was Drake and Kendrick, I would envy J Cole for that exact reason. J Cole of the three is the only one who could really leave outside on his, by himself. 
no, on his dolo yeah, no security. Really bothering, yeah. and, and he doesn't have to think about like danger or for his life. Yeah. Yeah. The only people like <laughs> the only thing he has to worry about is like fans mobbing him, but sure. other than that, no, nothing like negative, you know? That's why I should have been six five. <laughs> he is not because when you six five, you don't get scared of nothing. I don't think that's why he mobbed. <laughs> you sure? Like that. It's the energy that Russell you Westbrook. put out into the world. Amen. If you put yeah. that type of energy <laughs> yeah. out into the world, yeah, you're going to get it. Yeah, because even like, hmm. honestly, like, even though him backing out was embarrassing, people are very against it. When he's out and about, people don't really bring that negative. They're, they're yeah. not like yelling at him, no. like making yeah. him feel like shit. They're kind of just like letting him be. Like even going back to what I just said about Rick Ross. Rick, no, Rick Ross is the first person in history <laughs> to get punched in the face in Vancouver. By Hell's Angel. Like... You put Allegedly. that energy out into the world. Yo, yeah, cause, you're cause, going to get it yeah, back at absolutely. some point, one you're way right. or the other. Because stereotypically, right. Canadians are very nice. Exactly. And they yeah. still beat him up. Like, <laughs> like a fucking like, yeah. So now they got hitters in Vancouver. I, I mean, clearly they do somewhere, but I think it goes back to the energy you put out into the world. Like yeah. J. Cole, he set out to be peaceful, to be neutral, to neutralize the situation and say, hey. I don't want any parts of this. I love Drake. I love Kendrick. Mm -hmm. I am going to remove myself from this part of the race. Like when it was just on wax, when it was just on records, when it was just competitive, when it was a friendly competition, yeah. I'm here to take everybody's heads off. Mm -hmm. But now that I can see this is going to get a little bit more personal, yeah. I don't want no smoke. And I think the only person still uh, disappointed with J. Cole is Kendrick. And me. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Oh shit! The competitor <laughs> in me, <laughs> oh, shit, and, right, and, and nobody gives a fuck. And I'm sure there's other people that feel like me. Yeah. But to that point, I think there's an audience, there's a demographic who really believed in J. Cole's ability to say, "Hey, this is the opportunity where I want to be number one," and you can prove it because now the the perfect storm happened where you three guys are in a conversation, y'all are all acknowledging each other directly. But again, from a human standpoint. I can understand him wanting to protect his peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can understand sure. him wanting to say, hey, I don't want this to be personal. I don't want this to get nasty. That's not where my spirit is. That's mm -hmm. not where I'm at as a person in this day. Mm -hmm. But from a competitive standpoint and from a fan standpoint, we wanted to see J. Cole go there. Yeah. And from Kendrick's standpoint, I think he's on some shit like, yo, Cole, you're not down with us. You was the dude that made false prophets when you felt people weren't being themselves or this and that. Or, I, and... Kendrick has mentioned it on some of those diss tracks. He keeps bringing Cole still being, I forget the lines. He said Cole faking or some shit like that. I'm like, it was kind of, I, I yeah. know, the, you know it's not the one? exact part. It yeah. was like, oh, Cole's shaking in fear. I'm not. Like something like that. That's I, what Drake that said. That was Drake said. Kendrick's, oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, you're no, you're right. right. Kendrick said Cole fake. He I'm, said you did Cole dirty. He, he said Drake did Cole no, foul. No, it's something else. It's, it's something else. It's something okay. else. Yeah, right. It's something around the line. I'm going to figure it out. I'm no. going to look it up. But I do think he's really disappointed in J. Cole because I think he was the one where he was like, yo, dog, like, we're supposed to be the real... Hip-hoppers. Hip-hoppers. <laughs> the real <laughs> backpackers. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. With, with, with that being said, though, uh, with that being said, uh, first person shooter came out last year. Mm -hmm. That kind of was the first domino. That's crazy. Then we had Like That. That came out this year. That was on Future and Metro Boomin's mm -hmm. album. Y'all really then, liked first person shooter? Um, yes. I never spun that back. I when never it, spun that back either. Yeah, no, but, I really like. It. Really? And I love the video. I thought the video was phenomenal. I I thought it was like one of the best songs of the year. I, I like the video. She's a J Cole fan. Oh, I mean, but Drake was. And I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at <laughs> it. But she's right. The video it was. The video took me. It did. The song itself, when I heard it, of course I didn't think it was gonna transform into a beef. When I heard it, it just felt like. Nigga, y'all not trying to tear each other heads off. It sounded like I was just trying shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. Yeah. Um, so that one kicked it off. Then we had Like That. After Like That, we had Seven Minute Drill. That's no longer available on DSPs. Again, J. Cole standing on business. I don't want to be a part of this shit. I don't even want to make money off this shit. <laughs> I don't want this shit to exist. A, a point at all it never happened. I don't see the point of him deleting it though, because it's like, bro, the whole world heard it already. It happened. Like, Y'all never like, seen Men in Black? It's it's a moral. <laughs> no, but that didn't work because people still remember it. People still remember it. So it's it's a moral thing. Where I think he was like, you know what? My morality, the person that I am, I'm just gonna remove this from my catalog. It still exists. It's still in the world. Mm -hmm. But that came directly after like that. That. Um, and, and then the floodgates open. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I'm sorry. Just right before we get off of J Cole. Honestly, no, I'm, I'm like, yeah. if like, 
I kind of respect it because it's like he didn't care how stupid he looked, how much slander he was gonna get. He was like, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. Leave me alone. Like that must have been like really hard to do because he knew what was gonna come after that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like uh -huh. when you fuck somebody else, girl, and then you say, "My bad, dog." <laughs> It, it I ain't, mean, gets, I ain't like, mean to fuck up so good like that. Up, when you know you just wore his my girl fault. out, like, I know, know, I, I just went, doggy, I went doggy, doggy, crazy yeah. on that my fault, I put her in a collapsed doggy and shit, I ain't mean that. <laughs> but, yeah, you I ever was, been in that instance? That's my favorite shit. That collab doggy. What the no, 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 I mean, oh. you had to oh, acknowledge the dude. That's what he was oh. talking about. Oh. <laughs> talking about your favorite sex. That's like golf. What that look like? Like, I don't, I don't. Stomach on the bay. You on top. Bow, just, just bow, Google bow. it, fellas. It's cool. yeah, I was asking muscle. if you ever seen a dude, mm -hmm. you happen to be out. Yeah. You know who his girl is. You and his girl had relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still got to kind of keep it cool. That ever happened to you? And Reggie, I want to know if that happened to you too. I just did it the other night. Oh! Yeah. Damn. <laughs> when we I was think out? it matters. Huh? When we was out. Yeah, we were huh? partying together. What was we at? <laughs> we oh, was out. the plot thickens. Huh? Because I know where he was this weekend. Hmm. That oh. Hmm. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh shit. But J wait. Cole. J Cole. Okay, let's move on. I'm gonna ask you after. J Cole. Now nah, wait. Hold up. Before we get into Cole. Uh, nah. We I want to get a hub business. Mm -hmm. That ever happened to you, Reggie? What? Where? How? What would, be, what would the girl version be? I mean, it could go either way. Like your work was in the spot with another piece of work. I've never like fucked my friends, man. Like no, not, not even close. Not a friend. Not a friend. Not oh. a friend. An associate. Yeah. It's just... Why would that matter? What the fuck? <laughs> why <laughs> would I care if some random girl <laughs> likes the guy that I I'm like? Like, why would I care? If no, she's an associate? I care, and I just wanted to know if you ever been presented with that scenario. Like, oh shit, um, I go out. I don't think anything of it because I feel like no one would ever know. Like, mm -hmm. she would never know I'm messing with him. I would never like, and nobody would know, would know my business. So I don't really like have to keep it cool, keep that. it cordial. Like, I, respect yeah. I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. 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 Okay. A queen. A queen. A queen. Yeah. yeah. Now back to Cole. <laughs> Cole is proof that if you stay off social media, you not only won't be influenced from the people, but people will also start to forgive you because they're not seeing you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think like that's a large he's, factor. He's like not doing too much. Yeah, like he's just like I he try, didn't get on Twitter and like start talking yes, shit. Yeah, like, like yeah. when we see Drake <laughs> trying to act like he's um, he could be unbothered. Yeah. But when you keep like I saw an image of him uh, bowling, a video of him bowling. His name was Six Nine God. He posted up a pic at New Hope King, which is a oh, spot. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. So it's like I mean, yeah, you could say you're not bothered, but it's like. To not even see any of that would, even, would be even more impressive. Like, damn, you know, to think about this shit. He has a type of personality where, like, I feel like if I was got involved in a super embarrassing fight, I lost, boom, like, I feel like I have the ability to really, like, delete my Instagram or even just leave it up and not post anything, get very, very quiet and go on vacation. I right. feel like that would really heal me, but I feel like Drake does not have the personality for that. He has mm. to, like, post stuff and be like... Yeah, yeah, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. Yeah. yeah, it's really strange. I'm going to rattle off these songs, and we don't have to, like, break them down, but I do want to mention them because, again, halfway year, halfway point to the year. Um, So after, like, that seven-minute drill came out, that was J. Cole, his version of a diss. He backed out immediately. We never heard from him again. Still, till this day, we <laughs> never heard from him again. Even if he spoke, we still didn't hear from him again. <laughs> like, he's just been quiet. He's been super mute. The but then after that, we had Drake's first response to Kendrick, uh, which was push-ups. Can we revisit that quickly? Push-ups came out. Let's go for it. Remember when you thought I was joking about Drake talking about his size 7 shoe? <laughs> and I said, Savon, I know it's the first round. Believe me, because I got the foresight on this. That little crazy Compton nigga is going to get very <laughs> disrespectful. And it's not because he was making fun of his shoe size. It's because of the, the content matter. Mm -hmm. You can't come out round one talking about shoe size with a nigga who's hated you for a decade. That nigga going to keep some files. And he kept the files. Come yeah. on, nigga. Not only did he keep the files, but Drake didn't take him as serious because yeah. right after Push Ups came out, this is one of my favorite songs of the entire exchange, Taylor Made. Mm -hmm. oh, Taylor really? Made. Doesn't get when, talked about enough. I, I love Taylor Made, honestly. That's probably... And I don't know if Tip. it's because he used the AI, AI. version yeah. of Snoop and of Tupac. Yeah. I just felt it was super creative. I feel like he missed in the public's eyes. I saw. I, I was surprised by that. The public wasn't really fucking with it. And, and maybe artists. it's because they didn't really get it on DSPs. Nah, right? I don't think it was that. I think they really go hard with the people be, uh, have being passed away already and trying to use their likeness. But for me, I kept seeing that right, repeated. I thought it was 
I thought I it was thought creative. It was, I, Me too. I know we you said th- that. I know there's the people that thought it was creative and like a really, really smart move. I thought I've always thought it was kind of like strange that he really? did that. Always. I was like I was like, what are you doing using a dead man's voice See, in your that, that's, like Yeah, that's what and I heard. Also, you're yeah. not from the West Coast. You're right. not like associated with him. Like, what are you doing to to battle someone from the West Coast? Like I'm like, I don't know. I always thought it was very disrespectful. Like I I, 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 t- I just took that I took Drake saying that or doing all that as a, like, hey, like I'm just throwing these, you know, little jabs at you because you still haven't responded yet. And for me, Damn. it's like, I don't think there are any rules in battle rap. Mm-hmm. So th- I think that's another reason why I wasn't necessarily mad and I was honing on the creativity. But yeah, a lot of uh, greats don't, did not like that shit. Now, yeah. even, even from like Taylor May, the production was Dr. Dre influence, inspired, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. From the production to the artists that he used to even the references that he used, he used culturally re- uh, relevant references in Joe Budden. He was like, oh, you're the button podcast that you like little girls, they gotta be true. Like with the two pop. Kendrick, we need you. Kendrick, we need you. Like, even the references that, that he made, um, nephew, like coming in with Snoop Dogg. Oh what the fuck you really about to do? You were like, I thought it was super creative. I thought it was a dope song. I personally liked it. Um, I also think it was the gasoline on the fire, mm-hmm. right? It had he not came with that song. I don't know if we get Euphoria next mm-hmm. because Euphoria did follow Telemade mm. and Euphoria was probably um, the, 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 the gash. And oh, then the sure. other songs that came on was the salt in that <laughs> wound. But Euphoria was a phenomenal song from performance, from the Ken and Friends pop up show, seeing him perform that, seeing him even alter the lyrics. But even like that was the song for me that said, oh, I am really about this life <laughs> like i'm on that I, I'm, I'm a tactician <laughs> i'm not just a rapper right i'm slayer. Uh, I, slayer i strategize you know i study my opponent and i'm also giving you a one i'm gonna give you an out with this song yeah. i'm gonna fucking smoke your head off but i'm gonna <laughs> also give you a chance to be like you know what i don't want no beef drake didn't take that clearly but i feel like euphoria um that 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 set up the lane i know not like us is the clear hit I know he played it five, six times at the pop-up show. I know everybody's trying to be funny and play it in places that they shouldn't play it because maybe associates of Drake are there. I get it. But to your point, Savon, in hindsight, Euphoria is my favorite song throughout this whole beef. I like it more than that. Yeah, yeah, I believe them bet. I see you standing <laughs> sexy, right? I, I believe you see two bad bitches. bitches. <laughs> it's, 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 like the technicality, yeah, yeah. The, so the, the, the layers. You know, it's it just, it, it, I had to play that shit like 20 times to catch everything, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're sure. not doing that no more. For sure. So yeah. Euphoria came after that. After that, I feel like 616 in LA, it got mm-hmm. slept on, but there was a breakdown that came out a few weeks after where a lot of people really went in on that. Um, another phenomenal diss track. Again, like Reggie said, I think hip hop being at the forefront this year was, was, was on full display. Yeah. Full mm-hmm. display. I agree. Uh, um, so after 616 to LA this is when the debate came because Drake dropped Family Matters okay that was I, I was just waiting for us to get to it because that was my favorite song of that of the entire beef really for sure yeah wow. and also like I don't know if I'm just talking in terms of context of the battle but yeah. I'm just talking in terms of like life and us listening to music mm-hmm. I, I heard it outside multiple times since then and I just think it's genuinely a good song it is yeah. I, I will say this I think it could have been my favorite or second favorite just because it just wasn't as layered as a Euphoria or a 616. If um, that third verse, if we had that same beat from the first second, I think it would have been very, very hard for us to count that song out. Yeah. I don't know. I like, I ain't gonna the, no, lie I like to the other parts too. If, if Almost felt, out of reach if I'm my way. Drop, <laughs> but drop. you know what it is, Reggie? She, he ended uh, push-ups like that. Right, so we kind of mm-hmm. got a felt for how Family Matters was going to start mm-hmm. off of push-ups. So now when we click on Family Matters and we're hearing like the end of that part, it kind of felt a little mundane for me. Mm-hmm. Just for me personally. You know what's funny? Yeah. <laughs> Reggie, going back to what you just yeah. drop, 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 drop. Don't drop. tell a nigga to drop. When you ask a nigga to drop, and look what happened. Do look it. What and happened. then he drops not like 
<laughs> stepped on. He stepped all over. No, he tried to hit the ground. Yeah, asking, drop, drop. Like that was a fucking hilarious. Setup. That's a definition of be careful what you wish for. Yeah. But I think like, going going back to your point for family matters, I think that third verse it was a standout standout verse for me. Had he dropped that as an individual song, Ooh. I think it would have probably hit a little bit different. Ooh. Drake shot his load off on family matters. That's yeah. what it felt like. It felt like he said the red button, yeah, right? He said like, "Oh, yeah. I'm gonna just release everything." Um, very poor miscalculation on that. Didn't really, um, you know, size up his opponent in the right way. No, didn't really take the same strategy that Kendrick took. The same approach to it. He didn't take it, and he suffered for it because Family Matters, as great of a song that it is, as much as people like it, as much as I enjoy it, that third verse, again, I think is a legendary verse from the cadence. Even if everything he said in that verse was a lie, mm-hmm. which we haven't seen proven to be true, it sounded phenomenal, and it worked in that arena. Yeah. But directly after Family Matters came, Meet the Grams. I still have Nightman. <laughs> <laughs> right after Even just the beat. matters. Like, I'm thinking about that scary ass shit in my head right now. Alchemist, you're a demon. Me it's so grants. scary that Kendrick couldn't even play at the pop out because he knew it would have got too dark. Yeah. It would have just shifted. They would have started agent. fighting. Yeah. It's Meet the Grams came out. Yeah. And Kendrick, he spoke to Drake and his family. Yeah, he did. Spoke about a daughter who has not been revealed yet, or we don't know if it's a lie or not. You know, um, him putting that out, like, in hindsight, right? Not thinking about it. Who was the mole for Kendrick? What made Kendrick feel so confident to not only put that on the song, but also not remove it after its release? Like, nah, I'm standing on it. This is what I said. What I said is what I said. I get it, though. As a lyricist, what you, your words are your words. Facts. You can't you go me? back. You don't want to yeah, renege off of your words. Yeah. So I completely understand that. But yeah. I, and then people kind of just don't care anymore mm-hmm. that they don't know if Drake has a daughter or not, at, mm-hmm. at, at least at the point of this recording. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was just one of the sinister diss songs. Um, the moment of it, though, is what really stands out to me. I remember I was actually, um, I was at Joe's studio the night that all of this happened. So Family Matters came out. Um, DJ Academics, he went to Joe's podcast um, to record. They did, like, the special cover in this beef because this was happening in real time. Yeah. Everybody was trying to figure out what was coming next, who was saying what. Who was the mole? Like, this was one of the biggest moments in hip hop. And so, obviously, the two biggest media personalities in the space, they linked up at that time. And I was blessed enough to be at the studio. And I didn't know, but on my way home, Family Matters came out. Hmm. I live about an hour and some change away from the studio. Fuck and within up. that same time frame, Meet the Grams came out. And so, I think. Outside of just the songs, there was a moment there. Mm -hmm. There was a moment that played into it. Mm -hmm. It took the life out of the record. Um, And then right after Meet the Grams, within 48 hours, we got the song of the year so far. Again, Mm -hmm. halfway point. This is not the full year. We didn't get to December yet. But speaking to today, not like us. Produced by DJ Mustard, a West Coast anthem, a hip hop anthem. I think it is very fair to say this is the biggest diss song in in hip hop history. I've never seen a diss song translate the way that this has. What, what do we what do we uh put it against back to back? Way way bigger. Oh way, yeah, it's way, way bigger. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Back even back. just like the contents yeah. of it like what he's actually saying in it right. Right. like if bigger. we think about back to back definitely one of my favorite songs honestly my favorite drake songs but like it's like about like the biggest this is our like is that a world or oh, your girl song? Yeah. like you know like it's yeah. nothing like not and, like us and i think what a lot of what saved that song not saved it but helped it was that it was so catchy if i'm drake right now i'm tight nigga I had the rain for like the best diss track from the 2010s mm-hmm. and going into the 2020s and here you come calling me a pedophile on your shit. But at the same time, though, in the moment, back to back was crazy. That, yeah, I, re- yeah, yeah. I remember him being at OVO Fest, putting up all the meek memes behind yeah, me. Yeah, that was diabolical. I remember when he told the story about, yo, we made this song when we was in a hotel upstairs on that nigga. He was downstairs. He heard it. Like, I remember all of that shit. Like, good times. Good but time. in 2024, when we fast forward, yeah. we see that Kendrick. It's emphatic was able to take some of that blueprint, remix it, yep. and also unite people. That's, That's the I'm other saying. thing. Yeah. And I think we, we had an episode a few weeks ago when we talked about uh, New York's influence 
And one of the things that I believe is the New York artists never really united each other. They never really embraced each other, never really pulled each other up. It was a lot of division in New York. It was about me, 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 my mm -hmm. click, my click, my click. Let's do for me, 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 me and mine's. And we keep it pushing. Whereas mm -hmm. LA, there's been a lot of unity. And the Ken and Friends pop-up show, it showed that unity. Yeah. This song, like Reggie said, the content of it, not only is it a diss towards somebody, but it's also poking at the flaws and the character of a character, mm -hmm. which Drake looks like in 2024. He looks like a character of himself. We don't know him. Yo. He doesn't have any authenticity. You, right you, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just hit it right on we the love head. Drake. We yeah. love his music. We love his tunes. But it's like, what do you stand for? You just hit it right on the head. And it's something that I think a lot of us kind of knew. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, all right, cool. We just know that he's a hit maker. He's sort of like AI in a sense, right? Where you could kind of just slip him into an area. He could create a sound for you. He's going to take it where it needs to take it. Needs to be taken. Now I feel like a lot of people look at him and they go, "Man, I kind of see through you a little bit." And I think that was some that he did so well of covering over the years. Mm -hmm. How the fuck did that shit get evaporated in less than a month? <laughs> I mean, Kendrick, he 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 came, he saw, he conquered. Yeah. He came, he saw, he conquered. And then after Not Like Us, the hard part six. Uh, underwhelming, disappointing. Sound Wasn't like good. defeat. Sound like ass. Sound like defeat. <laughs> sound like a, uh, a white flag. Yeah. But then we see Drake kind of trolling and poking at Kendrick a few weeks later. And it's almost like he's trying to change the tide of, hey, I need you. It's almost like he's trying to lure Kendrick to play the same games that Drake played. Um, I don't think Kendrick is going to fall for the bait. I think Kendrick took his victory, also took his victory lap when he did that performance yeah. um again the time of this recording the video has it came out i can imagine by this time that this episode comes out mm -hmm. the video's probably out oh my god there was a <laughs> joke that like so big sean is <laughs> big sean is featured in like a music video or single that's dropping in a few days let's say i don't know make up a day i don't know like July 4th, I don't know. Eminem? And then, I, I don't know if it was Eminem, but it was Big Sean. Eminem, Baby Tron. Big Sean is featured, and people are like, oh, Big Sean is dropping that day? Well, we know when Kendrick's video is coming out. Because <laughs> the joke is, it's like, like, like his big moments are always stepped on by a bigger moment. <laughs> yes, no, it's true. And some things I kind of pulled from this battle, right? What I'm realizing, which kind of disappoints me as, as a fan of rap, hip-hop, music in general, is there not a way to critique someone you're a fan of? Mm. Without without you sounding like a hater, no. What is there a way to do that anymore? There's I not. mean, I was shitting on J Cole. He's my favorite rapper. But when he backed out, I was like, "This is crazy, J Cole." Like, but see, we're the logical people. But I don't think I sound like a hater either, though. Like T people cause... hear us in fucking sound bites. <laughs> people don't hear us like <laughs> yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, and shout yeah. out to the people that do because y'all tap in each and every week. Salute. But most people who are calling me a dick riding glazer ball sucker, they just <laughs> see me on fucking Instagram. Probably it's like, oh, this nigga sucks dick. And I'm it like, makes me think what the fuck. But it makes me think like, wait, even though you're a fan of the person that we may be critiquing, right? Yeah. Are you a fan that cannot critique someone you're a fan of? Yeah. That's crazy to me. I, I, I not. You want to know why? Crazy. You want to know why? So That's stand culture. You know? I didn't realize it was that many people like that out there, Brody. Where? What is the root word of fan? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely fucked that up. I'm fanatic. I'm fanatic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is the root word of fanatic? Fan. <laughs> and where does oh, the word stand derive from? Fan. Fan. Stan actually derives from the Eminem song Stan. Right, right, of course. Yeah. Where the story behind the Eminem song was his Stan is uh, short for Stanley. Mm, the, yeah. the fan's name was Stanley, and he was obsessed with Eminem, and he mm. drove all these miles to see Eminem. Random and, letters. And if you listen to the song, again, I know we have a younger kind of audience, but any, or maybe you're just not tapped in with Eminem, mm. right? But the Stan, the word Stan culture comes from the Eminem song Stan, mm -hmm. where there was a fan who was beyond a fan and went over and above hey i'm gonna prove to you how much i love this artist yeah. so that's where stan derives from and the word fan is just a shorter term for fanatic dear stan i wrote you but you still ain't calling all that he was writing them letters and... yeah but that's but just... i also feel like mm -hmm. stan mm -hmm. i feel like so eminem wanted that to mean stalker fan so he showed him that to stan and he purposely so it was supposed to mean stalker fan but then he pur purposely chose the name Stanley to be in the video to portray that like artistically I feel like no mm -hmm. so it wasn't from Stanley it was from stalker fan but he chose Stan I love that I, didn't know I feel that. like doesn't that make more, a little bit more sense it does make a lot of sense and again I, I know it just kind of works in this arena and to Alex's point 
this battle really brought out the, the stands. stands. The fans, the stands, like, yeah. and everything in between. Like, I'm hearing a lot of fans or stands right now saying, yo, when Drake come out with new hits, all y'all stay over there. No. No, I'm not. No. I'm going to be over there, too, when it's some shit I like. Fact. Because at the end of the day, I'm a fan of music. Mm -hmm. I should be able to be like, yo, Drake has been the soundtrack to my life for over a decade. But, yo, his strategy and game plan with a nigga that's a real sniper, I didn't like. Mm-hmm. There should be no issue with that. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Wow. I agree. Man. I agree. That was a big moment in 2024. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what are some how, other moments? I love how we had like six back to back two hour episodes talking about this and we could still talk more about it. That's yeah. how crazy Great it point. was. We can. Because it was that big Great of a point. moment in our culture, in this music. Like, Dude. I'm be, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm about to give a shit. Yeah, so, oh, shit. So, <laughs> there was a point this year where I was dealing with somebody and this beef had just happened. While I was dealing with that person, they were in the midst of finding like themselves in a spiritual journey, right? Or oh, they found God. Something like, yeah, for sure. That's what's up. Okay. I was so conflicted because of this beef, because <laughs> it was so... Why are you looking like that when I talk about the beef? Hey, yo. No, I'm like listening to the story. Because what wanna... God and Kendrick got to do with this? You didn't want to find I'm God? Like, I'm it? like trying to see where this is going. <laughs> I was so <laughs> invested in this beef yeah. that I couldn't <laughs> be compatible with somebody who was finding God. Wait, okay. What do you mean by finding God? Hold yeah. on. I follow up questions. So you weren't compatible because she was on her spiritual journey or because she didn't care as much about yeah, the beef? I was on the phone with Savon. He was telling me this in real time. It no, was but like, what do you mean thing. by that? Like, she was preoccupied? Like, I'm interested. Like, what do you mean? No, like, I felt I was doing a, her a disservice by being invested in beef when she was, like... Trying to be healthy? On her job. Yeah, trying to be, uh, yeah. Wait, but, like... You're such you an can, extremist. No, I love no, God, nigga. No, no, but, like, we could... No, that's what I was going to say. We can love God. All of us on this podcast love God, but we still so are invested nah. in rap beef. What, is, what do you mean? Nah, nah, nah. What Savon is saying is he, he didn't want to conflate the mix between secular and spiritual. Oh God, that's a so fact. That, to yeah. him, that mm -hmm. felt like great point. Se secular, uh, like music and just yeah, yeah. The, the hip hop ministry. No, it's true. There it's are people, really? there are people that really thing. Thing. like people that are really believers. Savon Pierre, they're right. Mm -hmm. They try to subtract. Was she expressing that she's like, okay, I don't want to listen to hip hop anymore? Like, was she saying stuff like that? They subtract that out of their whole diet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like the, anything that can have any sort of an influence yeah. to sure. okay. for sin she, and, or anything like and that. And that's what type of timing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that's Thank what type you. of timing she was on. She was okay. And you know what? I okay. You go first, Pierre. No, no. I was gonna say I I can attest to that because that used to be me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I oh, found uh, senior year of high school, I found God. I, you know, I, anything rap, I eradicated from my mind, my my whole thing. And then, like, after I realized, after a while, I'm, I realized, like, yo, like, what am I doing? <laughs> I, I can still love I can still love God and like you know be... and he'll, and, well I told myself is he'll also still love me yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly no but Bro. I just okay it, I don't know if this is problematic I don't care but like honestly I I have a great relationship with God yeah I'm I'm like really like it doesn't matter who knows besides me and him you know that's all that but matters. like I also don't know if I could date someone who wasn't fanning out about this beef with me that, and, and that's what I, it, was, it was a real that's what happened, that's what happened. It's, it's, happened. Like, it's just like such a big part of my interest my mm -hmm. passion like and if i couldn't speak to the person that i'm really involved with about this at mm -hmm. all stay up all night re-listening to family matters like yeah. that's just not i just don't think we're compatible i'm sorry god but like i just i don't know <laughs> oh, like, sorry god also, I, I feel yeah. like god also understands me because he's the one who put this passion in me for the for music sure. right so right. that's that's what I think about. And I get, and I get right. what you were saying. So yeah. as I'm thinking about this beef, this because, is crazy. I can't believe you told the story. <laughs> like, it was really conflicting for wow. me. Yeah. It, it was really conflicting for me. And yeah. but that just shows the impact that this moment <laughs> had. <laughs> nah, this and is, you guys, Pierre, I, yeah. I caught Pierre. Now you're right. Because you, you had right to get there. some advice from somebody no. that's been there before. Right? No, yeah, because Pierre's a good person to talk about this with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he hated hip hop before. You heard him. And, no, when he when Simon was telling me about it, I was like, damn, that's tough because I could kind of understand where she was coming from yeah, or for sure. kind of the environment that they were in yeah. and like how he felt about it. Like, yo, I love this. Like Reggie was saying, I love rap and obviously, you know, God is in my heart also, but like, would that deter you? Would my affinity for that deter you from liking me because I like? Yeah. It's, it's such a like juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, gotta yeah. just love God and seek redemption. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you have to talk about this? Like, you're like, yo, I'm really interested in this beat. Like, did you talk about it or like? I I don't think we did. I, I know it came up at certain points, but I felt guilty even bringing it up. This is like Patreon wow. level content. It is. <laughs> I know. I, I can't believe I just did that. And it's oh, not wow. to knock anybody. But no, it's not. I'm it's just not. thinking about how big of a moment this was in hip hop. That's for how me, important it was. To yeah. where like it was conflicting my personal life mm-hmm. as to okay, how do I live my day to day interacting with certain people who may not even be aligned with this? But it's it means like Reggie said, I'm such a fan of this culture. Yeah. I'm I'm so invested. I also get paid to do it. Like right. I'm I'm a part of this culture to the point <laughs> where is I can't not talk to you about you know yeah. so mm-hmm. and I was yeah, that, definitely I was definitely looking at people weird who didn't who just weren't as excited. Yeah. I, 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 was, I, was, I was only listening. I, I'm yeah. only looking at people a little strange if they claim. If they self proclaim to be such a hip hop fan and mm-hmm. they didn't care, Got you. but all the other people who are casual fans, it's like mm-hmm. it's okay. You don't have to be as invested as us. But like, yeah, yeah. yeah some people who swear up and down that they love this shit and they did not say a fucking word about it, yeah. I definitely peeped. And like, I want, mm-hmm. and I also highlight it does none of this shit matters in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, talk. That's what the other mean? thing that I realized too. Like as invested Finally, as welcome. I am, <laughs> as invested. <laughs> Well, Pierre was here back in the day. Yeah, as I, invested as I am in this shit, like it, it doesn't matter, but it, 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 but it, it does. Moves. At the same time, it's such a weird yeah, way. position to kind of be in yeah. when something that's so minuscule in the grand scheme of life, right? Like mm-hmm. whatever it is that you value in life, whether it be happiness through finances, whether it be happiness through experiences, whether it be happiness through disconnected from the outer world not even having social media like when you really think about it you decide what matters and what doesn't yeah and this is just one of the things that the culture decided that matter but then when you take a step back it's like these two niggas don't it none of this really matters but it was a moment and i do want to highlight and shout out everybody who was invested in the moment and um i think it was a phenomenal time Fantastic. yeah and i want to give a, a big kudos to drake and kendrick yeah they showed up the yeah. two of those brothers could have been passive aggressive over the next few mm-hmm. years. For sure. The two of those brothers could have just continued to dis I mean to trade sub, uh, subliminal shots. Mm-hmm. They really got to it. Yeah. You know, put their careers on the line. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I say careers on the line because we we seen how people reacted when J. Cole did, you know, bowed out gracefully, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. Granted, J. Cole's career is far from being over. Mm-hmm. But just how you know, that could really either damn your career. Like, imagine if Rick Ross really got beat the fuck up in Vancouver that day. They would have, like... Like, stomped out. Like, they, like, look, they look at you differently. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the gangster balls, the fly shit, they look at it yeah. differently, you know? So, yeah. I got to salute both of those brothers, real talk. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like the, like, I like that none of this really matters. I really find <laughs> a lot of comfort in that in life because it's like... We're, we've literally just spoke about for like an hour how passionate we are about this, but I really find it grounding when like this type of stuff that we talk about, all the gossip, all the celebrity stuff, it really does not matter. Mm-hmm. What matters is like our real life, like our families, us being healthy, that type of stuff. So that keeps me grounded. And then I feel like I have a great outlet with the need to know community to like talk about this type of stuff. Yeah. And so it's a really good balance. Like we're not, I guess I'm trying to say like, we're not like genuinely genuinely consume with this to where I'll like lose my mind over this you <laughs> no, know but it's know. just it's just a healthy balance know. of like being very invested but also keeping your real life that's intact. a good point because yeah. again we're not stands. yeah we're not yeah. full circle right like yeah. we're, we're fans not. of the music and the culture and whatever we need to critique or talk about we will do that for sure and it's nice when you have the balance of the music the real world and a little bit of hot talk oh on that gosh. shit so, <laughs> it's a little bit of nice yeah. hot talk hot I was wondering you how you were gonna intro. You that. gotta get a little bit of balance on the Yo. on the music and the hot <laughs> tour shit, nigga. We, we here. The double grip, <laughs> the double grip twisted. Y'all never did the little hot. That's twenty twenty four. Have I, I, I little... done a hot tour? <laughs> I ain't it, never no, done. No, My no. lips ain't never formulated a hot talk. No, nigga. I'm saying what the fuck is you talking about? On a, fuck, I just did it. Now we ain't been on either side. That's all I'm oh. saying. Shout out to Hot Toy. Wait, hold on. Bitches be just. <laughs> yeah, bleep that. <laughs> Wait, they don't? They don't? They don't? Oh. Like Hawk Spits? Hawk. Dro- Why your shit drop? Not, not, not the phlegm, just like. From what she's me that niggas might be too freaky Fli- for me. Me hey, up. Nah. It's funny we brought no, up Diddy. No I have denounced my freakiness and I'm doing it again. I am no longer a freak. Missionary you... only. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, you my motherfucking lawyer. Tell him. 
That's what they gonna get. <laughs> Missionary for me. That's cat. Y'all niggas is too free ball for me. That's cat. All right. It you is cat. You, do, you don't like singing on the pod. You got hot tour. And I got collabs doggy. Remember, I was referencing that. <laughs> you can't just, whatever. Hot tour <laughs> happened this Wait, year. Alex, you're not celibate anymore? What? Hell no, nigga. Oh, I, 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 I've been off that. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, okay. no, nah, nah, I've been yeah. off that. Okay. <laughs> that was like last year. <laughs> <laughs> we, yo, we covering this year, right? <laughs> He's like, I'm a changed man. <laughs> the fuck is we talking about? Hot tour happened. Yeah. That was the thing. I yeah. just figured out who that lady was. Would you? Would My you algorithm wasn't, would not want me to find that milk? I'm serious. <laughs> you really like milk. Hmm? You don't really like care for milk. Well, I love milk, but I just hate when they told us as kids that we needed it and we really didn't because niggas is lactose and tolerant. That was milk. all propaganda, by the so, way. So yeah, so I'm in between about milk. You in between about milk? Yeah. When's the last time you had some milk? I don't eat cereal. No, not I no said more. milk though. These are very media, tra- <laughs> media <laughs> trained answers. I had nothing to do with cereal. I just asked huh? when the last time you consumed milk. Milk? Yeah. Been a while. Nah, yeah. Been a while. Because you know that shit. If you leave it out in the in the uh, it curds. Yeah, you know it kind of get. It turns a cottage cheese. Yeah, you, yeah. You, uh, so you say milk is bad. You don't like milk. No, no, no. Milk still has its benefits. You know, calcium. You just say he hasn't had it in a very long time. You, yeah. Got it. Got yep. it. So you don't commit to milk. Uh, I don't commit to a lot of things. <laughs> he, he said. My, he said he's lactose intolerant. Yeah. You know, facts. You're lactose intolerant. You know, as you get older, like cheese, certain uh-huh. dairy products just All start right. bothering you. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? The hot tour girl happened. That was a moment. That was fun. <laughs> Reggie, you saw the hot tour? I just found I out. feel like I should double down. I feel like now I finally found my role on the pod. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm so sorry, but that shit was funny for like 30 seconds. And everyone was like, Hawk Tool, oh my God, oh yeah. my God, girls that love spitting on the dick. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I think it's just horny. <laughs> yeah, like, has the girl never said that hey, to you before? Like, Shaq even linked up with the girl. Oh my God. That yeah, is... yeah, with a huge smile on. He was like, what did he do? Like, did he like, look at her like this? Talk to her. Like, what did he do? Nah. Look at her like this. I didn't see the video, but I saw the the image of the video. And Shaq just had a but yeah. Shout out to that lady. She has done very great things for the timeline. She, yeah, she brought us together as a country. <laughs> she brought us together as a, as she a country. <laughs> she really united the Republicans and the Democrats. Everybody, everybody. At a time of the debates, <laughs> and Biden was shitting on himself on stage, and Trump was up there saying whatever, and Trump was getting it off. Answering she no questions. United us. Yeah. I really do. But they, they, oh, that's shit. what head can do for for the country. Oh, what can God. it do? Sucking dick. And what, getting your dick sucked. What about it? Can, it can just unite everything. If if you just on one of the receiving ends, depending on your preference, because there's a lot of people who just want to be on one side. <laughs> it can it can it can change the world. God depending on the side you want to be on. <laughs> what side you want to be on? I'm joking. Nah, I'm not gonna lie though. <laughs> I had to stop dealing with a girl that said she ain't get head. This is mad long ago though. <laughs> nah, because at first it was something I thought I could get past. Mm-mm. And then I realized quickly. I don't really I know, like, what was her reason for it? That, that's said, what intrigues me. Shorty just said, I don't suck dick. But so, I mean, did you follow up with follow up questions? Yeah, she just like, said, uh, no. I don't like that because I feel like it's, it's, it's very rooted in, like, yeah. it's very, okay, not Self, selfish. No, it's say, very, like, you don't care about pleasing your partner. That's exactly. what I'm taking from it. Talk so, which it. is why, that's why I'm, I'm like, not Alex, did you ask her if she, like, her parts to be consumed, not consumed. But she like, like now nah, she like her shit's consumed. That's See, that's that's, that's like an uneven exchange. I feel. But a lot of men are like that too, Reggie. So, like, I know a lot of dudes who are like, yeah, I don't really like, eat, I don't the, eat, I don't eat pussy. pussy. Yeah, that's why, like, that's well, a Caribbean yeah, well, thing. We, it's, we, a, it's a Caribbean nah, thing. Nah, a lot nah, of Caribbean nah, men don't eat pussy. Jamaican. Lying. Sometimes it's a Jamaican thing. Oh, don't just put that on the whole Caribbean. No, it, it's both <laughs> Jamaican for sure, but Caribbean men. I know a lot of Caribbean men. Yeah, Jamaican men are big on like not eating pussy, and they the biggest liars. I know so many Jamaican women that say, yeah, the man them eat my puss. Him saying, I can't do it. Man, him do it every night. Every blood clot that he eat me pussy good. <laughs> niggas be lying, bro. Caribbean niggas be lying. Why? Facts. It's just a facade. What the fuck is you talking it's about? The facade. That shit warm the shit up. Facts. I'm with, That's the I, app. No, you know. I'm I know American. you know. <laughs> I, I eat it all, nigga. <laughs> Whoa. You get it all. I, all right. I don't just stop at the puss, nigga. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's doing it every night. <laughs> it, it's blocked out pussy every night. Them niggas is lying. What, is, what else happened this year? Is there anything y'all want to talk about? I know Usher. Uh, Shout out to Usher. This has been the Usher year. Uh, yeah, seven yeah, months in, six Bowl. months in, however many. Um, yeah, Super Bowl being honored at the BET Awards. Uh, yeah. Vegas residency. Vegas, Vegas residency. Re- residency. Yeah. Um, also, we could talk about ourselves. It doesn't have to just be. Music. I know, I know. For yeah. sure. Let's Let's get to it then. Yeah.
Who wants to start? Talk about you. Yeah, talk about you. You want to talk about you? Yeah. So I want you guys to go first. <laughs> no, you I'll start it. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. PP, PP, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Golf. So if you could tell by the hat, I picked up golf. You know what I mean? I've been waiting to say this for a minute. My man. Is that a golf hat? Yeah, it's a yeah. golf hat. Oh, okay, I couldn't tell. So the thing about golf, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> You got to be diverse. You got to be athletic. And um, it just gives me a, an excuse to be athletic and, you know, just try new things. So I feel like as we evolve as people, you got to try new things. You can't just be stuck in one way. So uh, stuck, Especially stuck golf. in one thing. Yeah, yeah, golf. As we get older. Yeah, yeah. It's tough, but like at the same time. It's people think it, it's harder than it looks, right? Pause. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we have two golfers on the pod. Right. No, but it, I feel like it looks easy. Yeah. But like anybody who thinks it's easy, like I implore you to try it. Like yeah. try it. And yeah. I feel like. I'm gonna try. I don't like speak about people like this that I don't know, but I feel like you will be humbled. I feel yeah. like 30k hits your account when you try it. Like <laughs> and when you start doing golf, it's rich your money bubble. Rich activities. Yeah, your money bubble. It is. And like the other thing I wanted to say too. So I had a few bouts with you know golf in my journey so far. I almost flipped a cart on a course. Uh, I was at the driving range and I was um, hitting the ball and then the ball ricocheted and caught me right here. Wait, the driving and range. Yeah. Why were you on a golf course in the driving range? Oh no no no! Just two two separate instances. So I was at the golf okay. course. See golf terminology. Guys. When the um, see me and say you don't even catch that. I'm gonna ask you. I'm about to talk about NASCAR. Nah. <laughs> I said driving. Reg and, I was like, oh shit, this nigga hell <laughs> Reg and I are gonna bring you guys <laughs> on the and and Karen. Karen also golf, so Aww. we'll bring you guys. We'll He's have just a, white. A, don't do uh, that. <laughs> Nah, Wait, does, like, he, does he actually? Yeah, no, because sometimes I see, I hear them actually talking about golf. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah nah, he know about goes. the par ninety and all that shit. Par ninety, whoa, oh, par nine. Whoa, 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 I'm yeah. just saying shit. Par nine is crazy. That's like a the thousand birdie, yards. The birdie, yeah. you gotta hit the birdie. Gotta hit yeah, the birdie. Yeah. A birdie is when you make the. A birdie is when you make the. Um, the second attempt. No, no, no. Oh, when shit, you uh, when you make it, <laughs> uh, I think uh, if you're on a par four, and you make the ball in on your third hit, that's a birdie. Okay. That's one before part. See, Vaughn didn't digest the thing you just said. That nigga just said, okay. <laughs> Nobody did. But yeah, nah, did. it's fun. See, Reggie, no. Reggie's, nah. Reggie's the only smartest one on the, on the cast. Nah, it's true. Me and Reggie. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Thank God for y'all. But yeah, nah, that's, that's pretty much me. <laughs> that's dope. I'm glad you picked that up in 2024. Um, I, I, I don't even know really where to begin in this year. This has right. been such an up and down year. I know we talked about the music. I know we talked about the moments, but to try to keep it on ourselves mm -hmm. it's a little bit weird i don't know how to detach um one of the reasons that we're doing this episode is because we well me personally let me speak for myself yeah i have been begging to take a break <laughs> from life for about four months he's he wanted yeah. to take a break before the kendrick stuff guys yeah. and then when the kendrick stuff happened we had to just like put the pedal to the metal Dug it out. and then just record multiple times a week and stuff but i remember he was saying like oh since before he was like i, I want to take a break like, I, I i have been um really advocating for a break and not just from the podcast i love what we do i love the listeners i love the growth i love the support i love how y'all interact with us um and thank y'all to everybody else who, who like uh, Mason, Pierre, yeah. Kieran, yeah. Uh, Dre, Nia, the, the whole team, you know what I'm saying? Everybody behind the scenes. Y'all y'all really kind of help us push and, and make this a little bit easier. Yeah, but you. for me, the, life has just been happening. So over the last year, and I, I feel like maybe I didn't even talk about this on the pod, but my mother, she moved to North Carolina. With, yeah. With Actually, yeah. I know, because I was like, because you said something thing. like, oh, I might go visit my mom. I didn't know that she wasn't like in the, in the vicinity. She's not in the state anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, Which is a big transition, right? You've always transition. had your mother close to you. Since, since day one. Literally, since yeah. day one. So uh, my mother, she moved to North Carolina at the top of this year, around February sometime. That's a big adjustment. Um, obviously, we always talk about it. We joke about it, but the commute to the studio is a little bit tough for me, depending right. on the day, depending on the traffic. And then all of the moving parts behind the scenes. Like the thing about being a creator and also wanting to be a competitor in this space. Oh, wait, before I even continue, I want to say thank you for each and every one of you that have listened to this podcast and that have put us in the top 10, mm. top 15, top yeah. 5, yeah. top 25, yeah. Honestly, top 50, wherever we get placed on these Apple and these Spotify charts. Thank you. Obviously, we cannot do it without you. Yeah. And this has been the most consistent year that I Literally, have seen us in those charts. It's uh -huh. been every single week since like we started really going like hard in the beginning of the year. Every yeah. single week. Yeah, it's been... We you. don't have any guest... No, we don't not have guest based. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me, because yeah. we do have guests. Right. Shout out to our guests this year, Mandy's, uh, Edin came through this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Like we we have had guests this year, but we're not a guest based podcast. 
We give y'all ourselves and y'all show up each and every week. We don't have the 30, 40, 20, 15, 10 plus year careers with a built in fan base with all these network connections and maybe worked at this place and that place. Like yeah. we are literally building this shit in real time and to see the support and to see the growth. That shit means every single thing to me. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I've been able to push through as far as I have. That's personally really, yeah. for me mm -hmm. especially so, the silent listeners too you know the I mean? silent listeners yeah, too yeah. y'all are the most important mm -hmm. y'all yeah. are the most important I because i know y'all are tapping in each and every thursday Consistent. religiously and if we don't drop on a thursday and i want to shout out karen because yeah. karen made it a goal this year to not miss a single episode yeah. if y'all know me y'all know i like to take weeks off god damn it now we know <laughs> if y'all know me i don't need to be here every week <laughs> yeah uh, because i've i've noticed that besides this most recent one i've never like asked for a break from need to know but but I just noticed I never had to because Savon would be like, oh, by the way, Reggie, next month we're taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never had to ask. So Which is needed, man. I'm glad he does that because uh, I'm going to echo a little bit of what Savon is saying. People think I'm a robot. I think I'm a robot at times. Like, I think that's just that hardworking African man in me. Mm -hmm. Niggas don't know how to take no motherfucking breaks. He doesn't take many vacations. I don't. Like, I don't. Yeah, we barely see you eat. Yeah, barely even see him <laughs> eat, right? And part of that is just so instilled in, like, I'm... You know what? I'm a little bit of an extremist on the low. I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to like my goals and just how I want my life to be, I am the utmost extremist. I'm like, yo, we do a podcast every week? I bet we do a podcast every week. Like, I'm just gonna do it. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, this is what it is. It's gonna take us there. But to echo what Savon was saying, this has been, Savon and I have been owners for this. Damn, we're going into year seven. Yeah. Damn, what the fuck? Seven years. <laughs> Jesus Christ, brother. Crazy. Salute, bro. Um, this is the most growth the most engagement, the most love, the most word of mouth yeah. we have ever received without having to necessarily tap someone's back to do something. It's just happening so organically and naturally, and it brings so much joy to my life. It really does. I never thought niggas would want to hear me talk. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Well, they do. They, they do. They want to hear us talk, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, and we bring that... that so, I mean, salute to y'all too, man. Like, what we do here isn't easy. Maintaining chemistry. We all got our own lives. We all got mad shit going on. Like Savon is saying, his life has changed immensely. Mine as well. I got my little cousin staying with me. I think I'm a father. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this podcast has made it worth it because of the listeners, the supporters, and we thank y'all tenfold. So, yeah, that's pretty much like my update for real. I'm, I'm just appreciative of everything that just came through halfway through this year. I have a question. Yeah. So, like, do you think... Because we know that about you. Like, you're very, yeah. like, I'm just going to power through it. Yeah. If Even if I'm tired. Da, da, da. Like, you've always been like that. Yeah. But, like, do you think sometimes, like, you do need people like me and Savon yes. to force you to be like, Alex, yes. just take the two weeks off. Absolutely. Like, it's fine. Like, yes. I feel like we kind of told I'm, you, like, take a break. Yes. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very clear. I I'm the crazy I nigga. respect that. And I see why yeah, you I'm don't want to take weeks off. I'm crazy. But also, at the same time, no, no, no. there's a bitch like me who, like, <laughs> love, like, I'll be like, okay, let's take a break. I thank like, God for y'all every single day. Because it balances because, everything yeah, out. What if, told. like, what I'm not saying you are yeah. getting burnt out, because I don't think you are, because you're still Bro. talking at very high quality. But, yeah. like, what if you are getting burnt out, but you don't realize it? I'm not going to lie. I definitely, like, Savon mentioned a few weeks ago, like, yo, I walked in the the studio and I was tired. Yeah, like. <laughs> it definitely happens, but there's a little secret, y'all. Cause I'm fucking crazy. I find energy in being passionate about talking about shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find energy in I can see being that. passionate about like this. The music, like, it energizes. I, it, yeah, it really yeah, yeah. brings me to life. Shit, I, the reserve that I didn't think I had, yeah. it just brings it out of me. And then I'm like, wow. it's invigorating. It, it's really invigorating yeah, for my soul. On the Real way, talk. on the way to the studio, I feel yeah. like we might relate to. Like sometimes on the way to the studio on a Tuesday, we'll be like, oh fuck. But then yeah. once we start talking, yes. it's fun. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. But that absolutely. just speaks to your passion. Thank you. And a lot of our listeners, they listen to us because, you know, we're part of their weekly, daily routine and they're searching for their passion. They don't really even know what passion they can't really identify with what passion is, because not everybody wants to talk about music in the way that we do. Not everybody wants to talk about culture and entertainment the way that we do. But there is a need for passion in the way that you show up every week, the way that we show up every week. Yeah. This is a testament to that passion. So wow. um, I, I think it's super inspiring. And again, um, there's times where 
me and Pierre, we've had really, really hard conversations yeah. where I have to sit Pierre down. And I'm like, bro, you need a break. Whether you realize it or not, or not yeah. we collectively, we need a break. And then we take however much time we take off and we come back and we are hitting on all cylinders. Yep. And we always have a, 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 a rush of growth yeah. after that break because Absolutely. it's able to recharge. It's not about being lazy. No, right? no, no, no. We're human other, at the end of the day. We're human at the end of the day. Yeah. We're human at the end of the day. I think, you know, resting is important. Uh, retooling is important. All of those things are super important. So, again, just doing a midway check-in for me, <laughs> I think that's where I'm at. I'm super proud of us. Yeah, OG. I'm super proud of the community. I'm super proud of the consistency. Uh, we shouted out the people behind the scenes. But, again, I just want to shout out the listeners, man. Like, yeah. y'all have really showed up. And it doesn't go unnoticed, especially on those charts. It, yeah. it, it may not seem like a lot to some people, mm -hmm. but to us, we like listen to me and listen to me very fucking clear right now. Mm. We do not have any backing. We do not have zero any support financially. Mm -mm. We do not have any conglomerate who is funneling anything into us. The cameras, the quality, the production, while the consistency, jobs. while having nine to fives. <laughs> this podcast is a hundred and twenty hours. <laughs> okay. And what I mean by that, there's 40 over here, there's 40 over here, and there's 40 right here. Yeah. There is a hundred and twenty hours that goes into a bigger, larger conglomerate Sheesh. than our own independent selves. And mm -hmm. we show up each and every week, and y'all show up for us each and every week. Yeah. And this year has been the biggest, the ultimate testament to that. And for that, I thank you. And I can't say it enough. Absolutely. And it's not even over because we're about to go crazy in the second, oh, yeah, about to the turn second half. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just to close it, I feel like, oh, my God, my update is like so out of place now out of that motive uh, after that motivational speech. But I just own the shit. So um, <laughs> a quick update. And then I feel like, you know, we could get up out of here. I feel like you guys have seen me. Yeah, we started potting together 2021. And then 2022, I feel like people didn't really know me that well. 2022, I had like a really bad year in the beginning. Like I was just feeling like very lost. It was not the best year. So 2023, I was like, I'm going to get my shit together again. Really worked on like my health and like my, just like me, like my spirituality, my morals, all of that, like that. And then I feel like now shit has been great, honestly. That is my update. I'm doing yeah, great, guys. You told us this is like one of the best years of your life, right? Honestly, if not the best. Yeah, That's just fine. like yeah. reflecting on like, just back to back to back to back to back. Just like fun times, like yeah. uh, like trips back to back with my girls. With work, work is going so smooth. Um, financially, like I'm able to help out my parents so much. It's the best like, wow. Um, it's the best my parents, I don't know. They're just in like such a better place. Like I don't like to get into family stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. That was also you know last year's stuff. But I don't know. Everything is just great, and I just feel like it's because 2023. I took like I really like just changed everything. And I just, I just hope everything continues, guys. The pod is going well, but we just talked about it, and yeah, I just really hope it's consistently gonna go throughout the rest of the year. I have a good feeling. I feel like it will. God got us. Twenty twenty four is just a good year. Yeah, yeah. It God is. got us. Even it though is. a lot of fucked up shit happened outside, but us, <laughs> yeah. with us, we're we're gonna be all right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's fire. Yeah, yeah man. And congrats lastly, to your family man, too. My full P. No, no. I was, I was just saying to Reggie, congrats to the family and everything. I know oh, family's dude. big. Yes. Yeah. And well, I don't know if we, we could probably take this out, but. One of your family members got a um a scholarship. Oh my gosh, and, my little sister. Yeah. We don't have to take it out. Okay. Um, my sister is going off to UVA, even though she's still in my heart. She still looks like she's in, like five years old. She's going <laughs> off to UVA with a full ride. The last baby of the family. Fire. Shout out to my parents. It's their three P year, raising three successful kids in a row. Wow, amazing. <laughs> so, no, that's and, amazing. And what I love about it kind of connects to this a little bit because she called me. She calls me first for everything. She called me while we wrapped up filming a great episode. Mm -hmm. Jericho was in the studio. Pierre was. I think Savon was like in the bathroom or something. And she called me like crying. She's like, guess who got accepted to my number one choice? And I was like, guys, she got a full ride. And the whole studio was like, what? I was like, congrats, <laughs> I heard it while I was taking this shit out. I was like, oh, wait, what are they talking about? Congratulations. I told the story about it. She called me just normal. Like She was like kind of like in shock. Yeah. And when like Alex was screaming, he's like, congrats. She started crying. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. So just yeah. good vibes all around. Good for sure, for sure. Yeah. And, and we're going to continue those vibes into the second half of this year. Yeah. Um, we're oh. going to kick that off with the mixer. Yes, What'd the you mixer. No, no, no. I'm honestly, in and out. Thank you to everyone who found us through the rap beef or just certain topics that we spoke about this year and stayed. 
I'm seeing a lot of DMs from those people, and y'all didn't have to stay here. I know everybody's just looking for content when they're bored, so we salute y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to piggyback off of what Alex said, um, if y'all are here, if you have found us, and if you have stood with us through this journey, y'all are going to continue to grow with us. Um, the plan is not to stay in this position. The plan is to always grow. The plan is to always maximize our opportunities. Um, and, and with that, y'all support, it doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, but we do have a mixer. So if y'all do want to chop it up with us, kick it with us in real life, oh, in person, it is an open bar situation. I know we've been promoing it. But again, if you made it this far in the episode, I feel like I could really talk to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I could really connect with you on a different type of way. Um, so, yeah, the mixer is August 17th. Um, we have an, another half of this year yeah. to see how everything unfolds. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to wish y'all good fortune and thank y'all again for all y'all support. And with that being said, it is the Need to Know podcast. It's what you need to know when you need to know on the Need to Know podcast. God willing, we will be back again next week. We appreciate you tremendously tenfold, a thousandfold, whatever it is you want to call it. We out of here, y'all. Peace. Gang. Yo, what's going on, y'all? It is the Need to Know podcast. And if you made it this far into the episode, there is no reason you aren't subscribed to our Patreon. That is extra content. We are getting real. We invite you into our home. So please invite us into yours. Yeah. No, we're literally at home recording a lot of these episodes. Yeah, it's getting real intimate in there. <laughs> yeah. It's something new for us, but it's been going really, really well. Yeah, so that's uh, patreon.com slash need to know pod. We'll see y'all there, man. One of the things that I was thinking about when I was in Tulum, it's just some things that I want to do more of back home. Yeah. So before I even answer the question, I want to know if there's anything that y'all want to kind of insert into your life that you haven't really made time for, that you make excuses as to why you don't do it. Um, and, and yeah, if you, you know, are able to or if you want to do it. Yeah, for sure. Something in your life. Alex, uh, you want to go first? Yeah. I've actually been doing it more recently. You know, when you can't stay still. <laughs> Oh, I know. This is so you. So you. So I've been trying to cook more. <gasps> oh. Yeah. But my excuse for myself is always that. Well, I still do feel this way, but I use them as excuses too. I get After I'm done cooking, I'm not as hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. To the process of cutting the stuff up and actually waiting. Uh, no, and like buying, buying the ingredients. Yeah. Buying the ingredients, but as as of, as of late, I've really been trying to commit to do more of that because I, I like cooking. It's just it's just another way to be creative. I look at it as making beats. Like, mm, throw that in there. Mm, throw that in there. It's so, fun. Yeah, it's mad fun. No funny shit. And like, there's so many recipes online now. <laughs> you could get. You can make whatever you want. All you gotta do is go yeah. on TikTok, Instagram. Everything's there. So yeah, that is something I've been trying to incorporate more of cooking. That is a fact. I like that. I, so I didn't. I, I wasn't expecting that, but I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, we should yeah. do a need to know like potluck. That'd be fire. But everybody does record it. Dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. cooks like a, a little dish and then. Type shit. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be Aww. fire. Yeah. Reggie, it looks like you're still thinking. Um, For no. me, I don't know. Like, this might be a cop out answer, but I did go through a year where I just wanted to change everything. I don't know if it was 2022 or 2023, but like, and then I, I implemented everything. Like, I wanted to start taking care of myself, working out, cooking. I wanted to start reading more. Um, I wanted to make sure I'm always spending time with my friends and not just my boyfriend, like stuff like that and spending time with my parents. And I feel like, honestly, like I really do, I want to give myself credit because I really feel like I do that so well, like balance everything. And I guess like just implementing like consistency, like I don't ever want to lose that. I want to, my life to stay like this. Like I'm yeah. very happy. Um, and it could easily dip. Like I could easily let mm -hmm. this go. And so I guess what I want to implement is just never like, like letting up on that type of like balance. Mm, that's a good one. That. That's a good one. Yeah. And I've noticed I that change over the last year. Yeah. 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 I've been We're, very intentional. Yeah, yeah. Like one year at the top of like 2022, I told you guys, like I was not happy. Like I was like, I don't know why I feel so lost. Like, and yeah. now I'm just, I'm doing great. Like I implemented everything. So. And Reggie, you mentioned this. I think you posted this recently on social media. I forgot what it was that you incorporated it into. It was a vitamin that you incorporated into your lifestyle. Oh my god! Do not get me started. Everything. Was that magnesium? Magnesium. Or was that? Do not get me started. Oh my gosh! Talk guys. about it because this is something that a lot of people don't realize. Because we just be so used to waking up, going to sleep. Oh, all I got to do is shower, work out, and I'll be okay. There's actually other things we're missing, you know, in our mm -hmm. lifestyle every day. Well, now that you bring it up, yeah, magnesium yeah. is the most like. Most people in the world, humans, were deficient in magnesium, but right. it like solves 
everything. Like for me, my priority was sleep. I used to stay up at, till 4 a.m. every night. Like it w- that's so hmm. bad for you. And then wake up in the morning and have to go to the office. Like that is so bad for you. But um, yeah. like it makes you stress out. That contributed to my weight gain, I feel like, because my body was stressed out. So my um, my priority was improving my sleep. So I got magnesium glycinate. There's there's other stuff like magnesium citrate, which helps with your digestion. So everybody do your research. But as soon as I started taking it regularly, like I'd feel great. Like I used to be anxious. Mm. Like I used to feel sluggish, not sleep. To, every day now, I go to sleep at the same time, wake up feeling great. So just highly recommend, guys. You don't have to listen to me, but I do think everyone can benefit from just, you know, having a cute little magnesium supplement. Absolutely. And go to your doctor. We, You know, every it's different strokes, oh, yeah, for, yeah, diff- yeah. Different strokes for different folks. And I don't want you guys to take mm-hmm. overconsumption of something that you don't need. But to Reggie's mm-hmm. right, point, right, right. I love that you you realize what was missing. And mm-hmm. then it literally Good. just solved everything. Like, yeah, that's fine to me. That's fine yeah. to me. I love that. It's like mental Viagra. I would say so, okay. honestly. I would say, yes, like, clear, like clarity. Like stimulation. Like stimulation. Yeah. Yeah. It did everything you needed clarity. to do and more. That brain fog is gone. Yes, the brain fog is gone. Yeah, like, that's real. Brain fog is like, a real thing. Sometimes my periods will get like very, very moody. And I'm usually like, I never used to have that when I was younger. And now mm-hmm. I have no symptoms. Like, it is so wow. crazy. Wow. Like, wow. Yeah. How often do you take it? Uh, every day. Every day? Morning? I don't know. Night? So. Uh, at night i take one capsule at night and i think that is enough for me again as alex said please go to your doctor i i just i know we're not doctors and all that but i do think that it's like me recommending like vitamin d like it's like very common very very common like it's not some trendy thing like Mm -hmm. magnesium supplements guys highly recommend (laughs) folks it's not ozempic it's not Ozempic. No, it's no, yeah, it's, it's not, not no, 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 no. Not, Ozempic, not diabetes medication. No, okay. No. Right, See, cool. folks, you're not depressed. You just ain't got no magnesium. No, literally. literally. That's it. That's it. It'd be the small shit. We just don't. Maybe I'm going to add that to my yeah. Uh, yeah. vitamin supplement. Yeah, I'm about yeah, to go yeah, get yeah, me yeah, some yeah, right yeah. now after this. Yeah, we about to go to CVS. Yeah, like, we need to smile. Can I buy it on a company card since she mentioned it? Yeah, 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 yeah. HR is clearing that. Yeah. All right. All right. You heard that, right? Yeah. HR is clearing you. Because Karen be looking at the charges like, yo, bro. Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, me and Karen. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Karen. Um, for me on this trip, I I realized I remembered, I was reminded how much I love to read, yo. Oh, I love that. I remember how much I love to read. So wait, when did you when did you stop liking to read? (laughs) Alex, we're trying to have a beautiful self reflection moment. (laughs) Bro, you know what I realized? It was fucked up. When I was reading, <laughs> and then I would see a word like, wait, hold up. I gotta look this one up. I gotta look this shit. What the fuck forgot. this be? Yeah, he's like, it's been like, a while. It's been a minute oh since I God, really God. just sat down and flew through chapters. Like, not just, I right, let me read a chapter here, put it down, then come back in two weeks. No, like, just binge reading. You know how, right. like, people right. binge watch? Mm-hmm. I want to encourage binge reading. Nah, talk up. I like I this. I felt so good. I felt so light. I felt like I was actually learning because mm-hmm. when you read at a certain level, you you forget that there's higher levels of everything in life. <laughs> but reading, there is a higher level of reading and comprehension. And it's Absolutely. like, bro, I have a whole degree. I'm, I'm I, I consider myself to be somewhat smart and intelligent, right? Yeah, I'm, you, I'm are, you are. You are. Yeah. But. I, I I felt like, oh, I'm 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 learning while also yeah. reading. So. Um, for me, I, I do want to find a way to implement that. I, I make a lot of excuses. Like mm-hmm. I stopped working out ever since the fucking marathon training. I haven't oh, worked yeah, out yeah, since yeah. Oh, that I didn't even fucking complete. <laughs> um, but I haven't worked out in a few months. But working out is one of those things that, you know, I think everybody wants to stay fit, stay active, be in mm-hmm. shape. So mm-hmm. working out is definitely one of those things. But reading is like I need to get back into intentionally reading, find a place, find a time. Um, one thing I know about myself is I can't read. It's hard for me to work or be productive in my space, like yeah. my home. Mm-hmm. So going somewhere and finding a place to read is really important for like my process of reading. Um, having right. a highlighter because I like to highlight things that resonate with me in that moment. And then whenever I skim through the book that I completed, I'll go back to it. I'm like, oh, this stuck out to me. Or I remember mm-hmm. why I highlighted this or why this resonated with me. Um, so for me, I, I really want to find a way to tap back into the reading. reading binge reading wait so what okay so i have two follow-up questions because this is my bag mm-hmm. i love like i also got like this this Same. this was like a big change for me um so do you like is it physical books only like you have to hold the book 
And then yeah. what types of are you? You're not reading like novels, right? I'm assuming I you're reading like like just like oh like tips for success, like that those types of books, right? Or um, novels, memoirs. like stories. Oh, oh I'm, okay. I'm, I'm I'm currently reading a memoir. Mm. Um, so memoirs, biographies, self help books, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now for me, memoirs, and mm -hmm. I like to read memoirs of successful people. Obviously, y'all know my guy Jim Carrey. I have Angie Martinez, uh, her book as well. Oh Daily my god, yeah, I read that. I like year. those, those type of books, right? Where mm -hmm. you can learn about people and and learn about yourself in turn, and learning about people you fuck with. Um, and then your favorite people are really vulnerable and transparent in books and writing. Yeah. Because yeah. most people, they always say, if you want to fucking keep a secret, hide a secret, hide something from black people or people in general, you put it in the book. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your favorite people are really <laughs> giving it up in these books. No, they like, are. If you have a rapper or artist, like, that Patreon. Man, he has exactly, exactly. Books Rick Ross, Patreon. he got a book. Yeah. Fifty Cent, he got a book. Like when they really will tell you who they are and some of the things that they've been through in mm -hmm. depth in a book, opposed to an interview or a song or a playwright or something like that. Right. Um. So for me, I've I've learned a ton uh, in the few chapters. I think I got through like six chapters in a day, mm -hmm. which was damn near half the book. And I didn't want to put it down. I got fatigue from reading, which <laughs> I haven't had since I was in elementary school as a punishment. Right. Like yeah, I, yeah. I got tired. So um, reading is definitely one of the things that I want to do. And I, I want to encourage binge reading because we yeah. always talk about binge watching shit. Mm -hmm. But I want to like binge read. Like that's, yeah. yeah, just like I love getting like lost in a book. That's why I'm so jealous that you were on vacation and you were probably just laying there like just reading Vibing. like, Vibing. but like one of my suggestions was going to be so the way I got back into it was next to our office is the New York Public Library. I love just like gotcha. I got I have my little library card on my lunch break. I go and find a, a nice book and I check it out and then I go to like a cafe. Like I just love that process. I feel so great. But yeah. for you, I feel like that wouldn't work because you like highlighting. So you can't like yeah. borrow. Yeah. So you can't like borrow books. <laughs> I also yeah, had yeah, a yeah. recent epiphany about books, right? The 50 cents, your faves of the world. I'm with you, yo. Like, I want to read y'all book. I want to read y'all books. I want to see your perspective. And again, what Stavon was saying, they really do give it up in there. On the other side of that, if I don't know you niggas, I don't want to read your book. Like, you don't care. Yeah. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. No, real talk. Because yeah, no, like, why would I, I care? Like, I just had this moment, right? Um. I'm not going to say this young lady's name, but she came to my job at Sirius and she was promoting a book centered around how she got out of her depression using hip hop music. But I didn't know that. I, she just gave me a book. I, I've, been look, I've been reading as of, as of late. And the most recent book I read off of the cusp before reading that was uh, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. I think I mentioned it to y'all. Mm -hmm. And in that book, I felt so connected to it because us as creatives here are creative. So he's just. Going down every lane as a creative. If you guys that don't know who Rick Rubin is, he's music producer, A and R, Legend. Kanye West, the greats, Rev, all of them, Super Run DMC, all that shit, Super Dev Jam, you yeah. name it. Like you so, want him in the room when you're like, yeah, music. yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So hearing some of like what he was pulling from his life, that was so great. Man, this shorty was talking about how she used to listen to Scarface when she was depressed. I didn't give a fuck. I like because yeah, like it's like that. You don't have you don't have that don't connection. Care. You don't have don't that connection care. to what she's saying. Yeah. No, and I and most importantly, I felt like I wasn't learning anything. I just mm -hmm. felt like I was just consuming a piece of literature from someone who said, "Hey," and I get it though, right? Because there's probably someone out there that relates to her story, right? Mm -hmm. Like hip hop has helped me through depression. Man, I closed that shit so fucking quick. If I ain't learning nothing, don't give me the book. I want to learn. Hmm. Fuck! I want to listen. To I don't me. know if I should save this for like our next episode, <laughs> or if we should just keep going with this one. I think you should. But, you should say what you need to say, and then this episode we don't have to do the questions because it's gonna get really long. Yeah. Fine, okay. Fine, 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 fine. That works. That works. That works. This was fun. I can't wait to talk about the whole learning shit because I I learned yes. something about me through watching like some bullshit. But we'll talk about it. On the next <laughs> and it'd be like, oh that. no, no. I meant like if you want to fit that in for the last episode, uh, the last topic in this episode. Or no, no, it's forty five minutes. We, oh, we shit. gave him okay. enough. We we okay. we gave him enough. Let's let's kick this over to the next one because, and out maybe I'll leave a little cliffhanger. Y'all know the Pop the <laughs> Balloon show that I've been yes I've been obsessed with. I've yo, been obsessed I found with that show. yo I got obsessed. I found a Jamaican one. Oh my goodness! Oh, end it right here. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in the next episode. If y'all are here, thank y'all for being here. Comment below. Uh, we are gonna record another episode and, and get into like the Pop the Balloon shit. 
Um, I have a confession, and yeah. Oh, and, no. Enjoy. <laughs>